So I want, today I want us to discuss, I want us to discuss uh, how to position ourselves, hallelujah, how to position ourselves uh, to receive divine harvest. How do we position ourselves? Because there is one thing for God to lead. It's a blessing and you and me to be in the possession to receive the blessing. It is one thing for God to release the harvest eh? and for us to receive the harvest. Sometimes we may even not be there. Many people pray and they are not there when God answers the prayer. When God sends the angels, hallelujah, to bring forth the harvest or the answer to your prayer, you may not be there. So it is then important for us to, to be in that possession where God, where we will receive, hallelujah, I think there is a lot of echo, eh? where we will receive eh? the abundance of God. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we need to know. Hmm? One of, the, one of, the, one of the, the things that we need actually to do is number one to possession ourselves. And the best possession you and me can be in order to receive this harvest is to abide in Christ. Tell your neighbor, abide in Christ. Hallelujah. Because when you abide in Christ, then you will be in a better position to receive the harvest. The Bible says in John 15, John 15, uh -huh. John 15, 1, please. It says, I am the vine, I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. First number two. Hallelujah. He cuts off every branch in me that does not bear, that does not bear, or that bears no fruit, while ev every branch that he, that bears fruit, he prunes, so that it will be even more fruit. Amen. When I Jesus, as we are sad. Amen. So, I want fast number four. Let's go to fast number four. Mm. Fast number four say, abide in me and I will be in you. No branch, hallelujah, no branch can bear fruit or can receive harvest eh, by itself. It must remain in the vine. Hallelujah. So, you and me, should remain in the vine. Abide in the vine. That is actually the best position that you can be. Hallelujah. So that you may receive hmm, this divine harvest or supernatural or spiritual harvest from God. We need to abide by the vine. It then so means we abide by Christ. Because in Christ we will, we will bear much fruit we will receive a great harvest. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Outside Christ, mm -hmm, you cannot receive any harvest. So we need to position ourselves in Christ. Abide in Christ. Remain in Christ. Stay there so that you may receive that which God is releasing upon your life this man of divine harvest. If you, receive, if you believe that, say amen. Number two, number two, you need to have a vision or get a vision. Get a vision hmm, of your harvest. Get a vision of your harvest. The Bible says in Proverbs 28, is it 28? Proverbs 28, 29, and first number 18, it says, where there is no vision, people perish. But he who keepeth the law, happy is he. 
Amen? So, there's one thing actually to keep waiting for a harvest and to receive it. You have to have a vision. Ambia mweza kuwa na maono. Today I, int I intend to teach. So I may not come where you are. So keep your eyes open and your ears open. Hallelujah. Where there is no vision, people perish. So even though the Lord has said that this is the month of divine, divine harvest, if you have no vision of it, you may not receive it. In fact, you may be destroyed even before you receive it. Because where there is no vision, people perish. Where there is no liberation, the people cast off the train. Amen? But blessed is he who keepeth the law. So men and women of God, God wants us to have a vision. Because if we have no vision of even ever receiving a harvest from God, we are not going to receive. And that's so important for us. We need to know that. Tell your neighbor, have a vision of divine harvest. Because when you have that vision, then God eh, will bring forth, you know, will fulfill that vision. And you know, a vision is, a vision is that which, you know, I mean, you see. You can never receive that which you do not see. A vision brings forth a vivid apparition, apparition, such that, you know, you will, if, if you do not see where you are going or what you expect, you will not receive. And that's why God at one time calls Abraham, he calls him out of the tent and he showed, showed, showed him the stars of the, of the, of the, of, of the sky. Huh? And he asked him, what do you see? I see the stars. And then, if you then see the stars, your children will be more than the stars that you see. Hallelujah. God was bringing forth a vision upon the life of, of Abraham. Because without a vision, people perish. They cast off this train. This month, you need them to have a vision. Have a vision that this month, God is gonna, gonna release a harvest upon my life. And you also know and need to understand that a, uh, that a vision is, brings forth a compass. It's like a compass of, you know, of where you are going. So if you do not have a vision, you cannot reach your destiny. You need to have a vision. And like this man, you need to have a vision that this particular man, that God will release a harvest upon my life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So tell your neighbor, have a vision. A vision of that harvest. In other words, we are saying that to bring it home, have an expectation in God. You can never ever receive from God without a, that kind of expectation. Mwambie mwenzako, kuwa na expectation kutoka kwa mungu. For the expectations of the righteous are never cut off. If you expect to receive from God, I tell you the truth, you will receive. Because the expectations of the Elisha will never be cut off. If you like, that will be our number three. Have expectation of divine harvest. Hallelujah. Have expectation of divine harvest. Because, uh, uh, because um, you know, a vision is a big picture. But expectation is, uh, you know, it's closer to what you and me need in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are a blessed Amen. Have expect your expectation to receive to receive a harvest, and you will receive that harvest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because by the grace of God, if you expect that abundance, you will receive that abundance from God this season of divine harvest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Are we together, church? 
The other one now, which will be number four. If you are following, which number are we now? Number four. Obey God's command. Obey God's command. Deuteronomy 28, verse number one to two. The Bible says, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe carefully all his commandments, which I command you today. Everybody say today. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord, your God. That the Lord, your God, will set you high above all nations of the earth. One I use as if we are son. Amen. That is what God told the children of Israel at that particular time. This he told, talked about it in Deuteronomy. In the in Deuteronomy talks about the repetition of the law. He was actually uh, Moses was actually reminding the children of Israel not to forget. Hallelujah. What the Lord had done in their lives. And in this particular place, he brings, he brings this, this idea of God's commandment upon their lives. He repeats. This is actually a repetition. And he tells them, if you diligently obey. Hallelujah. If you diligently obey. Why diligently obey? Because you need to be diligent in obedience, because diligence is not easy. No, obedience is not easy. You need to cultivate a lot of energy, a lot of strength, so that you may obey God. And this man, we need then obey the voice of God, so that as we obey the voice of God, we will receive the harvest. Hallelujah! Because of obedience. Amen. We see Isaac. Isaac in Genesis 26. Isaac was told, do not go down to Egypt. Yeah. Remain in this land and I will bless you. Hallelujah. And in the same land, yeah, in the same land, God blessed him. He never went down to Egypt because of his obedience. Then he sold in the dry season, in the famine and dry land. Yes, and, and under the scorching sand of Saudi Arabia. And the Bible says, because he obeyed God, God blessed him. Whatever he sold, the Bible says, he he received a hundredfold return. Because of obeying this man, that obeying the word of the Lord, you will receive a hundredfold return in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Harvest shall be sure when you obey daily God, God's word and God's voice diligently. So harvest shall be sure in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we need to be obedient this man. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, be obedient to the voice of God. And you will receive a divine harvest. I see some people looking at me, telling me, I didn't, I didn't tell you to tell me. Tell your neighbor now that if you obey God's word diligently, this man, you shall receive a harvest from God. Hallelujah. Umefanya hivo. Amen. So obedience, we need to also understand, is the attitude of submission to instructions and the authority of God. Hallelujah. So, God's promises are never accessed by a disobedient person. God's blessings are never accessed by a disobedient person. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Amen. You know at times that's why I come close to you because I see like you don't and you are not understanding so nakuja hapa na jaribu kuingiza hata kwa 
Amen. But I don't want to come today. Hallelujah. Hmm? If you are disobedient to the voice of God, you cannot receive any goodies from the Lord. So obedience is a key to is the main key to receive the blessings of God. So we need to be obedient. Most of God's promises and blessings are contingent upon following his instruction and keeping them. Not only following, but following them and keeping them. Hallelujah. Mm. To bring, bring you closer, the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ go to swimming one day. And the Bible says that they, that they toiled day and night without even receiving a frog. Hallelujah. Their nets were dry. They caught nothing. They struggled or toiled the whole night. But Jesus comes and asks them, have you got anything? What happened? They said we have not even even." Got in a frog, nothing, nothing the whole night. We have struggled a whole night. That is dryness. He's talking about fun, talking about barrenness, talking about lack. They lacked. Hallelujah. But when Jesus came and told them what to do, and they obeyed diligently, they received a bump harvest. They received a, a divine harvest because of obedience. Jesus taught them, hmm, launch into the deep. Look at these guys. They were actually brought up as fishermen. They lived on fish or they lived on fishing. That was their job. Jesus, Jesus was never a fisherman. In fact, Jesus could only have been associated with the carpentry, like Akula. Hallelujah. Buana Yesu was his first son. So, so the, the, it, it looks as though the disciples were in a better position to know the times of fishing, the times you can get schools of fish a group of fish is called a school schools of fish hallelujah they were in a better position but they never got even a frog but when they obeyed the word of the master they they had a bumper harvest everybody says bumper harvest in fact they said eh? Eh? The, the, the Bible says, nevertheless, because you have said it, amen, we will obey. We will do it. Hallelujah. And they obeyed diligently. And they received eh, hmm, a lot of fish, a bumper harvest. So this season, we need to be obedient to the voice of the matter, even the voice of God, so that we may receive eh, a bumper harvest because this man, this man, there is an uncommon grace that the Lord has released of divine harvest. That whatever you sow this man, so shall you receive a harvest. Hallelujah. So we need to take advantage. I hear the Lord say, Sow in the deep, and you shall receive a harvest. Obey God, and you shall receive his blessings. Hallelujah. Obey God and you shall receive that which God wants you to receive. Say amen. Amen. So I can say, I, I can, let me say an amen alone. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm. So, 
Obedience is the only key that unlocks God's treasure of blessing in our lives. So obeying leaps rewards, while disobeying brings forth, uh, brings forth consequences. See, amen. So the act of obedience of <coughs> is the heart is the heart of receiving from God. So we need to be obedient. Amen? That's a great key. And I want to continue with it just a bit. One should note that obedience is a choice. Obedience, my brother, my sister, my son, my daughter, is a choice. You may, you may want to, to obey or not, but there are consequences if you obey, you receive a blessing. If you disobey, there are consequences say, that you go by, by that. So, our attitude determines our lifestyle. Our attitude. People receive the word of God they do, they, with an attitude. When God says, you know, obey, they take it with an attitude. Oh, it is because of this and that and that. That is a negative attitude. But I tell you, if you, have a, if you obey with a positive attitude, God will bless you. Thank you for those two amens. Hello? If you have an attitude, that attitude of obedience, you obey, it will change your life. Amen? Our lifestyles determine the attitude of obedience that we have. Mm -hmm. Our lifestyles change depending on the attitudes that we have in our hearts. Have a positive attitude and you will be a better person. You, will, you see, somebody with a, with a negative attitude, you know, you will find, always find them on complaint and corner. They complain a lot. Please, my friends, I urge you by the masses of God, never be, never be friends to a people who complain about things of God. Learn away from them. Show me an obedient person and I'll show you a blessed person. A person who does not complain. The church today is full of people who complain for nothing. And most of the people who complain, they complain because of ignorance. So we're talking about obeying God, which is actually a choice. When I was your son, it is a choice you make. <laughs> Amen. Look at those disciples. They had a choice not to be obedient to, God, to, to Jesus. And the consequences are they would have gone home without any single fish, let alone a frog that limps by mistake. Hallelujah. But because they obeyed, hallelujah, they went their net full even to breaking and even the offer through, they give to other people. Because of obedience. Tell your neighbor, I will obey. Say, I, I choose to obey. Tell the other one, the other side, I will obey with a positive attitude. Hallelujah. So this man, hallelujah, this man, as you obey diligently, I declare in the name of the Lord, you shall receive the divine harvest from God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Number three, obedience is land. Mm. It does not just come. Obedience does not just come. In a Somewa, we learn obedience. Mm. To Nafuzo here. And that's why we are here. Amen? To teach on that. 
Hebrews 5 and verse number 8, the Bible says, although Jesus was the son of God, he was destined as a human being to learn obedience by accepting the suffering he had to endure. So I'm just saying that, uh, that obedience, we receive obedience by learning. Huh? So we need also to learn. Tell your neighbor, learn to obey. Learn to obey. And every time, even in school, when we disobeyed, there were consequences to go by. When we were in school and disobeyed, many of us here who are in school, eh, they can tell you that when we disobey, when you they disobeyed in school, some they went home with some consequences. Maybe their bottoms aching because they received some stripes. So there are consequences every time of disobedience. There's a guy <laughs> is known as King Saul. He disobeyed the voice of God. And when he did obey and disobey the voice of God, then you know the story. Yeah, what happened? He was he was removed, he was rejected as king. Many of us will be rejected because of disobedience. But now that you are learning to obey, none will be rejected but shall receive from God because all of us shall be obedient to God and to the voice of God this man so that we may receive the harvest from God. Amen. Let me say this. Neither queen Guinea. Disobedience looks very ugly. No. Obedience looks very ugly. Yeah. Obedience looks like it's a great work. Obedience doesn't look very pleasing. But I tell you, the consequences of disobedience are so bad. So we need to obey because obedience brings forth fruitfulness from God. When you obey, you will be clean. When you obey, you will receive peace. When you obey, you will receive from heaven. My friend, heaven looks for an obedient for somebody who is obedient and they open doors to an obedient people and they close the doors to disobedient people hallelujah yes when you obey heaven opens doors when you disobey heaven closes doors and this month we need to be obedient to the word of God tell your neighbor obey God, obey the word of God, obey the voice of God this man, and he shall receive divine harvest tea in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Bible says that all things are all things are, are possible with God. Or with God, nothing is impossible. But I tell you, but I tell you, hmm, if you disobey, hallelujah, you will know that God owns silver and gold. He owns everything. He releases his blessings to the obedience. When I was with son, I pray that we become obedient to the word of God, to the voice of God, and we, everybody will see the difference. Amen? We, so let's go to another one. Mm-hmm. Another position. Be qualified. Be qualified to receive your harvest. You need to be qualified. It means then that these blessings or the harvest does not go to everybody. Believe me you. There are many people in our midst that shall receive harvest while others will guess and will wonder what one did. And they will start blaming uh, themselves. Or they will, start, they will start talking about other things. Oh, oh, 
huyo huyo mtu alibarikiwa alibari namna gani you need to qualify tell your neighbor be qualified to receive a harvest and how do you how are you qualified how are you qualified hmm? the bible says in galatians 6 and verse number 9 so let's not get tired of doing good at just the right time we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up hallelujah so if you get weary of doing good you will not be qualified for a harvest i will say that again so that maybe you will understand the bible says so let's not be tired of doing good so if you get tired of doing good the bible says then you will not receive a harvest where some hapo nzuri usome pamoja let's read together so 1 2 3 so let us not get tired of doing good as in our dokaga wakati tunasoma haleluya endelea kusoma hii inaonekana So then it means that then if you get tired of doing good you will not then reap a harvest of blessing from God is that true how many agree with me but if you if you don't get tired or you don't get weary of doing good it means then you will reap a harvest amen kama wewe umechoka kutenda mema ujue kabisa you disqualify yourself you disqualify yourself from receiving a harvest ama hiyo hamtaki kusema kitu mkisema kitu ndio naweza kusikia mmeelewa ndio nielewe inakuwaka tu hivyo amen eh yeah, zuabi so amen ni kitu kingine kusema amen na iwe hivyo nimekubali nimesikia ndio niendelee yeah. haleluya So the Bible says that if you get weary of doing good then you will not reap a harvest when the time comes Is that true So what do we need to do so that we get qualified to receive a harvest from God <clears throat> eh? What do we need to continue doing Leo nilisema sitakuja hapo kwa sababu nafunza. Amen. What are we supposed to do? To continue doing? How about if we are weary of doing good? You will not receive a harvest. So, how do we qualify to receive a harvest? Everybody says by not get tired of doing good. Because let me tell you, you can easily get tired of doing good. Watu wa Mungu you can easily get tired ask me how you can easily get tired of doing good if you expect the people you are doing good to to reward you you can get tired number one, even me I, sometimes i feel now i have helped these people for a long time but uh, they are not seeing I will stop. In fact, sometimes I say, "Yo, dio mwisho." Then I hear the Lord talk to me that your work is doing good. Don't be weary of doing good. If you are weary of doing good, you will not receive harvest from me. Siku moja Mungu alinikamea akaniambia, "You will look at people to help you. It is me. Remove your eyes from people." So please please <laughs> don't get tired have you meant to go don't get tired then remove your eyes i am tempted to come but i'm not 
they remove your eyes from expecting those people you are doing good to to even say thank you. As simple as that. Sasa, mimi hata kama uzemi thank you, I will continue doing good. I, because I don't expect any reward from man. I expect reward from God. Amen? So my friend, don't be aware of doing good. Because as you continue doing good, God shall release a great harvest upon your life. Amen? We are still in that verse. Hmm? And the Bible talks at the light time. The light time comes from God. Some people have waited for a very long time. Others have sowed, like the Bible says in Psalms 126 and verse number 5 and 6. It says, them that sow in tears, they shall, they shall, they shall receive with songs of joy. So, hallelujah, those who plant in tears will harvest yeah, with shouts of joy. It means it's not a short time. They have planted for a very long time. I tell you, my brother, if, and though you planted for a long time, don't worry. This is the season of our harvesting with the songs of joy. God has seen your tears. Amen? Can I tell you, the season that Salah, I wanted Hannah, the season that Hannah received with his shouts of joy, it came. If that season came for Hannah, that season has also come for you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because many people, we have sowed in tears, but I want to declare today that for them that have sowed in tears, God shall wipe your tears this month, this month of divine harvest, and you shall only receive with his shouts of joy in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, are you qualified, <laughs> hallelujah, to receive a harvest from God? Are you qualified that it is the most important thing? If you are qualified, say hallelujah. Amen. Say, Lord, I am qualified. I am qualified to receive. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. So November is the month of abundant harvest. You will receive in abundance. And I tell you something. Because the Lord says you continue doing good. The Lord says we, we need to continue to be obedient to his word. And he tells us this is a month that heaven is open to bless each one of us. I want to say this. Hallelujah. That every seed that you sow this month of November shall receive a harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. The good you do this month, the good you do to somebody this month, the obedience you take this month, you shall receive a harvest this month in the name of Jesus Christ. Because there is a grace, there is grace, even uncommon grace that God has released upon this this church, this man, in the name of Jesus Christ, you will only receive. You will only receive. Do not get tired of doing good. Do not get tired of, of obeying God. Continue to obey. And every, of every hand of obedience, this man, everything that you do, this man, every good thing that you do, this man, you shall receive harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. So therefore, do not be wary of doing good. If you have been doing good and you gotten tired somehow, I, I ask us to arise and to continue doing good because this is the man that God is going to bless us. This is the man that God, we are going to receive a harvest in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, number six. Actively reap your harvest. Actively reap your harvest. The Bible talks about that. 
in Isaiah 41 and verse number 15, the Bible says, Behold, I'll make you into a new threshing thread with a sharp teeth. Hi. Hallelujah. Umeweka yo. Behold, I will make you into a new threshing sledge with sharp teeth. You shall thresh the mountains and beat them small and make the hills like chaff. Hallelujah. Because God has made you this man. God has made you into a new threshing sledge. Hallelujah. It means then, whatever you say this man shall, eh? you shall leap a harvest. Whatever you do this man, hallelujah, God has changed you to a sledging, a sledging, to a new, amen. The Bible says, I will make you into a new threshing, threshing sledge. What is a threshing sledge? Ni kama upanga, upanga wakukata ngano, upanga wakufieka, upanga wakushukua mafuno, upanga. Hmm? Hallelujah. Sasa nasema, you translate like this. God says that this man, Everything that you tend to do, you shall receive harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Because the Bible, God has prepared you, has changed you, has even given you sharp teeth to eat your harvest. harvest. <laughs> Amen. So, you will leap your harvest. This is certainly the desire of God in our lives. The desire of Jesus is that each one of us receive harvest. Tell your neighbor you will receive harvest. Tell another one you will receive harvest. Tell another one you will receive harvest. Even they are dosing, they are dosing, touch them and tell them you will receive a harvest. You shall receive a harvest. Be prepared. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those promotions that were sat on, promotions zikaketiwa, na zimeketiwa na watu, mimi na kuambia, muwezi huu, watasiodokea, na utapata. Muwezi huu kuna anointing, kuna anointing ya kulisifu. Harvest. God has made you into a new threshing sledge. He has given you fresh chop teeth. Hallelujah. To eat your harvest. Mambo makubwa yataenda kufanyika. Katika mwezi hu. Katika jina la Yesu Christo wa Nazareth. Chochote ambacho kilipoteaga. Huyo mume ambaye alipotea 19 long ago. Mwezi hu atakuja katika jina la Yesu Christo wa Nazareth. Huo uhusiano ambao ulipoteaga wakati bali huko utakuja mwezi huu katika jina la Yesu. Mwenye aliiba kutoka kwako kwa kimabafu, Bwana ataenda kukurejeshea mwezi huu itakuwa a divine harvest katika jina la Yesu. Yes, mwenye alikukonigi zamani zile Mwezi huu utapokea kutoka kwa Mungu because this is the month of divine harvest in the name of Jesus Christ heaven is open for you heaven is open for us you shall receive divine harvest in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ ambia mwenzako nimesikia aneno la Mungu limesema hapa katika Mathayo Matthew 9:37 Matthew 9:37 The Bible says Hallelujah Matthew 9:37 The Bible says then Jesus said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful everybody say the harvest is plentiful 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 
Haleluya. Sasa mnaangalia huyo, bana mniangalie. Amen. Na huyu anatengeneza dio msikie vizuri. Dio hiyo kurukaruka isha. Amen. Jesus looked at the disciples and he said to them, "Hey, the harvest is truly plentiful, but the laborers are a few." <clears throat> This means there is plenty of harvest. But what we see as people, they are only as the people. Oh sorry. We don't have people who are ready to work for the harvest. We don't have a people this month hmm, to rise up early and go play. We don't have a people who are ready to take it by force. And the Bible says since the days of John the Baptist until now the kingdom of God suffered violence and only the violent take it by force. Arise, arise and labor for your harvest. Arise and labor for your harvest. You have to arise and labor for your harvest. Let me tell you, in other words, that harvest will not meet you in your bed. There's no harvest in your bedroom. Wake up, go out. There is a harvest everywhere you go this month. Every job you attempt, you shall receive a harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. And the Lord says, yeah, the harvest is sure. The harvest is sure. It is truly plentiful. In other words, I say, it is. receive the abundance of God but you have to work for it you have to rise up early and do your end to and receive it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ mwezi huu if you want to qualify huh? to qualify for a qualify for a harvest you have to rise up early you have to be a person who labors for the harvest kama hujafanya kazi fanya kazi mwezi huu na utapokea mafuno. Huu ni mwezi wa mafuno. Haleluya. Huu ni mwezi utapata mafuno. Watu wananiangalia tu. Huu ni mwezi utapata mafuno. Unajua kwa nini? Eh, kwa nini atupatagi? Ni kwa sababu atuaminiki. Unasema oh, hiyo ni ya wale wana. <laughs> Kama ni maombi asubuhi. Ah, hiyo ni ya wale wanaombaga. Wanaitwa itasesas. sasa hapo mmenyamaza siku za tao ndio watu wengi wanasema hiyo maombi ni ya intercessors kwanza pasa chini chini akianza kuomba how do you ame ai anaomba how do amepakwa kwa maombi my friend eh? he is laboring for his harvest how about you <laughs> nilikuwa nimesema sitakuja he is laboring for for his harvest how about you kanyaka blanket mpaka inatomboka na una pesa ya kununua ingine kwa sababu haiwezi patikana kwa kitanda toka ambia mwezi wako toka nafikiria watu watanikumbuka wakiwa wazee kama mimi young people mnaonekana mkilegalega pale amuka enda washa pahari hata kama huko umetumwa alafu mwambie mwenyewe hapa nimeosha nitakuja nitakuja pakiwa pachafu mwenyewe atakuangalia namna hii akutolee tu i've seen that happen somebody comes to clean my place and he cleans kabisa na siku kwa mwambia alafu namwangalia hivi nasema guy sasa huyu jamaa eh eh ata, atarudi hadi mguu na tafuta kama 500 na that is harvest kama angekuwa mekanyaga kitanda hangepata si ndio haya and jesus said to them that the harvest is plentiful this man in the name of jesus christ hallelujah receive your harvest rise up and labor for your harvest rise up and labor for your harvest in the name of jesus christ do what you have never done do what you have never done before in the name of Jesus Christ if there be if people are not coming to buy in your shop go there 
go out there and tell them ah there is a shop the shop the things you need are in this shop instead of staying inside and there is nobody who is coming go out for them <laughs> did you hear that go out for them so what? Get out. Go out there and tell them kwa bei nafuu unatoka nje usikae ndani umekaa ndani muda mrefu hata hii kanisa hatutakaa ndani hivi tutaendaga kule nje na kuambia watu hapa kuna mamiujiza ambayo huwa inatendekaga katika jina la Yesu Kristo wa Nazareti pia Yesu makofi Bwana Yesu asifiwe may the Lord make you a new threshing thread this month in the name of the Lord Jesus right may you harvest divinely this month in the name of the Lord Jesus right may the Lord God who is the Lord of harvest, harvest come your way in the name of Jesus right if you stand then you receive well in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord of harvest mama kwa hivyo ni kuonyesha hamunifuati <clears throat> Hallelujah. Yeah. Mm. Now I want you to say, Oh the Lord of harvest. I am back with same Oh the Lord of harvest. Locate me. Locate me with the harvest. In the name of Jesus Christ. 